Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Aura News broadcast. It is 6 o'clock, and that means it's time for our daily English news edition. And as usual, I'm Daniel Cook, your host. The government has withdrawn from its bill on slander, choosing to reformat the article in the criminal code in order to penalize only politicians and not the media. This was decided after harsh reactions from the media and the opposition. Prime Minister Rama clarified that making slander a criminal offense has nothing to do with the media and he apologized for leaving room for this misunderstanding. He said, criminalizing defamation has nothing to do with the media. Defamation should be a criminal offense for any politician who is paid by the taxes of the citizens. The article should also reflect this purpose, which I publicly expressed a long time ago. I'm sorry for this big misunderstanding. The assembly speaker also admitted that there was a mistake in the formulation of the bill and that the bill did not match the purpose for which it was created. Some minutes later, the Minister of State for Relations with Parliament, Hermonella Felai, announced the withdrawal of the bill for reformulation. Minister Felai clarified that the article is not meant to punish the journalists and the media. Rather, the article is a new ethical standard in communication. She said, we will withdraw from the initiative and clarify it in order to avoid misunderstanding. But one thing should be clear, the politicians have to make real and correct statements. The article has nothing to do with the media and the journalists. The opposition consider the article to be simply an attempt by the government to stop them from speaking. The Democratic chairman said, with this article, Rama wants to blackmail the media, but he knows that he cannot frighten anyone. He cannot stop the opposition, the media, or the citizens from speaking. The Democratic MP Oerd Bulukbashi claims that the bill is not a misunderstanding and that it directly condemns the media and the opposition. What Minister Felai declared today is completely nonsense, he said. There is no misunderstanding. The Prime Minister is trying to stop the voices of the opposition. President, Nash, uh, President Nishani also expressed that he is against the initiative, saying that it would restrict the freedom of expression and violate the democratic standard. The OSCE representative on freedom and the media has expressed concern about the drafted amendments to Albania's criminal code. She encouraged the members of parliament to reject the bill, which establishes the penalty of prison time for slander or libel against public figures. Mrs. Mijatovic made the following comment. Public bodies and officials should not enjoy additional protection from critical speech. On the contrary, they should tolerate a larger degree of criticism than ordinary citizens. Criminal sanctions for libel or defamation are excessive and disproportionate. They should be replaced by effective and appropriate civil or administrative remedies. I call on the members of parliament to reject the new proposal. In 2012, the authorities in Albania decided to abolish prison sentences for defamation offenses, a decision that was welcomed by the OSCE representative. The ombudsman Igli Totozani also rejects the idea of considering slander to be a criminal offense. He sent a letter to the parliamentary law commission expressing his disagreement. He comments on the letter. I have been a victim of slander, but it should not be penalized. Slander cannot be a criminal offense. We sent a letter to the law commission that slander be decriminalized. We also asked for the removal of the fine for slander, said Totazani. The country's journalists have also spoken out against the initiative and have held a protest in front of the parliament to demand that the government withdraw from the proposal. Prime Minister Rama's initiative to criminalize slander and libel has already been rejected by the Ministry of Justice about two months ago. Oran News has managed to acquire a copy of the letter that the former Minister of Justice, Nasip Na uh, Nasip Nacho, sent to the Minister of State for Relations with Parliament, Ermonella Felai, on September 17th. Convincing arguments are needed, it says, to prove that the protection provided by this article is justified and does not violate the principle of equal protection for all. We suggest that your proposal be re-evaluated and that you should carefully argue your reasons for creating a new criminal offense, reads the letter. The former Minister of Justice also told the Parliament that before it drafts amendments to the criminal code, it should consult them widely, taking into consideration the changes that were made in 2012 when slander was decriminalized by consensus between both parties. In today's parliament session, both Democratic and Socialist MPs addressed the need to reform the justice system. 
The Democratic MP Astrid Patozzi asked for the reform to be comprehensive and inclusive, and the Socialist MP Ben Blushi claimed that the opposition is using the justice reform as a condition of decriminalization, which according to him is unfair. Mr. Blushi said that Albania's parliament is shameful and that the justice reform is the last chance to clean it up. There are so many incriminated people in this parliament that I sometimes feel like I am in custody, he said. But unfortunately, this parliament is legitimate. People have voted for them because they did not have any better alternative. They have voted for the parties, not for the people. Would this parliament be so incriminated if there were an independent justice system in Albania? I think not. The justice reform is political, and I do not think that the parties really have the desire to clean up this parliament. Only an independent justice system would improve the political climate in Albania. An independent justice system would make us fear the law and take responsibility for our personal actions, said Blushi. He went on to say that the impunity of the officials is the reason that so many citizens are seeking asylum as a way of punishing the political class. He continued, a driver, a poor person, a client, everyone goes to prison if they break the law. But why don't the politicians get sent to prison? Because we do not have a law or reform for the elected officials, said the MP Ben Blushi. The small and medium businesses have given warning about protests against the new penalties in the law on tax procedures. The administrator of Confindustria spoke against the harsher measures, arguing that they will boost corruption. He sees the strengthening of penalties as unnecessary and feels that they should be reviewed. The fines against informality are now 10 times higher than before and enter into power today. For this reason, small and medium businesses say that they will protest on Friday in front of the prime minister's office closing down their businesses for some hours. The protest will include companies in other cities as well. The businesses of Korcha have also warned about a two-hour protest on Friday. A business rep named Albert Nasso had this to say. There will be a partial protest starting from tomorrow. Businesses will be closed for about two hours. It is the legal right of business owners to say no to the strengthening of penalties. The small business owners say that before strengthening the penalties, the government must first verify the conditions in which businesses operate and the amount of revenue they collect. The government approved the draft of the 2016 budget on Wednesday evening, but it has not yet been published on the official website. The Ministry of Finance submitted the draft on public finance when it closed the negotiations with the International Monetary Fund. It is not known whether any changes have been made to the version they submitted, but according to the ministry, the revenue for next year is expected to be for, uh, 418 billion lek, a slight increase compared to 2015. Expenses are expected to be 452 billion, and the budget deficit is projected to be 34 billion, which is significantly lower than this year. As stated in their press conference with the IMF, the economic growth will range from 3 to 3.5%. It should be noted that these figures remain to be confirmed after the Prime Minister's office releases the draft version that was approved yesterday evening. After passing through the government, the Parliament is expected to begin discussions on the draft probably by next week. Thanks for joining us once again for our daily English news edition. Please be with us again at the same time tomorrow for more translated news in English. Thanks. Have a great evening.